In Acts chapter number 20, beginning of verse 28. Thank you for standing. It says, Take heed therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock over the which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers to feed the church of God which he hath purchased with his own blood. For I know this, that after my departing shall grievous wolves enter in among you, not sparing the flock. Also of your own selves shall men arise, speaking perverse things to draw away disciples after them. Therefore watch and remember that by the space of three years I cease not to warn everyone night and day with tears. And now, brethren, I commend you to God and to the word of His grace, which is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among all them which are sanctified. I have coveted no man's silver or gold or apparel. Yea, ye yourselves know that these hands have ministered unto my necessities and to them that were with me. I have shown you all things how that so laboring you ought to support the weak and to remember the words of the Lord Jesus, how he said it is more blessed to give than to receive. And when he had thus spoken, he kneeled down and prayed with them all. Let's pray. I, wanna, I do want to preach on this thought. It is more blessed to give. It is more blessed to give. Father, we love you. We thank you for the day. Lord, we just pray that you would uh, bless the reading and preaching of your word. I pray that you'd help us to get our minds uh, fixed in a right way and our hearts fixed in a right way that we might serve you more effectively. Lord, we love you and we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. You can be seated. This is the time of year that uh, here in your birthday, unless you're a December baby, in which you usually just get one gift and it's kind of the, you know, Christ Day, Birthmas, you know, whatever, you get that combo gift. But, you know, you get around your birthday, somebody will start asking, what do you want? Or they just get you what they want you to have. Around Christmas time, you start thinking about getting gifts. I got a gift this morning, man, it was a blessing. And, uh, you, you, know, and you know, getting a gift tells you something. You know, it, it's wrapped up. In fact, I, I probably should have waited till, till later on, but they're opening their gifts early because one of them's going out of town, so I opened my gift early, and uh, I peaked. But you know somebody cares about you when you get a gift. You know somebody's thinking about you. They, they thought about you enough to decide to do something for you. Um, you know, they, they sacrifice some time, effort, money, expense on your behalf. I mean, when you get a gift, it tells you something. I always like it. Uh, the gift I got today from that particular family, I, I get a lot of gifts of shoes. So because of that family, I have a lot of shoes. And I love shoes. And they know what size. That's a big deal when you're my size. Doesn't do you any good to get a, get a shoe that ain't your size. And, and, they, and so it's good to get a gift. I, I appreciate the gift. I love it. In fact, I immediately took a picture of it and sent it to my wife. I was like, check this out. Just got that. You know, it's good to get a gift. But it's still better to give. It's better to give. Now, when you're young and immature, or you're just not young, you're just still immature, uh, you don't always appreciate that the, the giving is better than giving. But, I mean, uh, giving is better than getting. But I'm telling you, giving is better than receiving. In so many areas of our life, it's good to give because you have something to give. If you're able to give something, it means you were able to. And uh, if you give something, it means you care enough about somebody. You, your relationship with somebody is, is, is at the giving level. You know, I mean, we all know a lot of people, but... We usually can't afford to give every, you know, so you kind of got to pick and choose. You start with usually the people you live with and then, then, then you know, a couple other people maybe. And, but it's hard, you know. I mean, there's not, we're not, you know, things don't just grow on trees unless you're giving fruit. And so we, uh, we understand that not everybody can give to everybody else. So when you are giving to that limited special group, 
It means that your relationship is at the giving level where you have somebody that you care about and you're close enough with that you're able to give to them and, and that you feel led to give and you're able to give. I mean, we care about people enough. Listen, I mean, if we, if we had endless means, we could, we, there'd be thousands of people we'd give to. But because we don't have unlimited means, we have to decide. And it's that way in a lot of areas of our life. Like we give, in our family, we give a lot to missions. Because we don't have unlimited funds, so I can't give to the movie theater. I can't give to Texas Lottery. I, can't, uh, I don't give to you know, the, the Ford Motor Company or Chevy Motor Company. and I, We don't finance vehicles if we, don't, if we can get away from it. We, we don't give it to the mortgage company. We, we try to have what we have, pay off what we have, and, and do all that so we can give to missions. If we, if we decide, if our, mo if our motivation changed and our, our ethics changed and our, uh, you know, our situation, our relationship with Christ changed, we might go, you know what? We're going to have to give to, you know, GM. We're going to have to, GM's about to get a bunch more. And we'd give our money to GM. And they, they would love to have our money. And, uh, but we want to give to missions. We'd love to give gifts, to nice, fancy stuff to everybody in the whole church. But we can't. We just mainly family and stuff, you know. And we have to be careful just like you have to be careful. When I say it's more blessed to give, I don't mean go put yourself in hock so you can give away a bunch of stuff. That ain't giving. That's, that's stealing. You're stealing from yourself to give to somebody. Listen, I'm talking about things that we can give beyond just gifts uh, 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 for Christmas or birthdays and all that kind of stuff. The Apostle Paul, here he's specifically talking about the investment that he's made in people. And he reminds them of the word of Jesus, who obviously made a sacrificial investment in people. Now, it's, it's nice when you have a connection. with. Listen, there's a lot of people in this world that are lonely because they're disconnected. That for whatever reason, whether... Um, Bad attitude, mental illness can do it. Uh, age sometimes can do it. Declining health can do it. Sometimes people, they, they don't make an investment in, in people early on. And when they get older, they end up by themselves at home. Nobody calls, nobody comes, nobody cares. That's a sad place. I'm telling you, we've done uh, funeral services for people where there were six people there. That's pretty sad. That's pretty sad to, to, to live your whole life and at the end, six people come by to say bye? I don't care what you do with my body. You can bury it. You can cremate it. You can donate it to science. You can donate it to science fiction. But I hope that when it's all said and done, that I poured myself into the lives of enough people that somebody had come by, because I'm planning on preaching my own funeral on video. And I'm working on it now. It's going to be awesome. You don't want to miss it. <laughs> but I don't want to... I'd hate to think we got to the end and, and there wouldn't be anybody on my behalf because of the life that I lived that couldn't come by to try to comfort my family. That's not a life well lived. To me, that's a very poor testimony. And it's not that way. A lot of times the number goes down with older folk because they're not in the workforce. They're not able to do as much in their community. Maybe they're not as active as they used to be at church. And they're just, they, they just, things have kind of slowed down a bunch. But one of our dear church members lost a family member just recently of a lady that was over 100 years old. And they were talking about how it was just standing room only. Just a hallelujah. Why? That's somebody who kept pouring into the lives of other people. One of our men was giving a testimony during the announcements about uh, how you know he missed getting cards from his grandmother who recently passed. Guess what? At her service, there's a lot of people there. And, and you get used to that and, 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 and being around people and being involved with people. But sometimes people stop pouring into other people and end up isolated. Isolated. Some people are just isolated because they're mean. 
I mean, some people are just jerks. There could be other factors, but most of the time, if you're just kind, people will love you back. If, if you think that you've been doing your best and nobody loves you, maybe you're doing your best at the wrong thing. I mean, most of it brush our teeth, wear deodorant. If you're nice, why wouldn't somebody want to be around you? And you say, well, I'm doing, I'm, 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 I'm. Well, you might, you know, something ain't happening, right? Now, I'm not trying to be ugly. Listen, uh, I'm just being real. There are people who are alone because it, ultimately we are the sum of our own decisions. That's who we are. We're the sum of our decisions. We are living with the consequences for the decisions that we've made. That's why we push so hard for young people. That's why I love it that young people sit on the front row because, hey, young people, if you live a life that's terrible and you make bad decisions, you end up with garbage at the end. But if you will make decisions that are wise and you will simply do what God tells you to do, I promise you this. God will bless, and you will have a better life than you would have ever had without him. Just stay close to God. We, we push that all the time on young people. We, you go, why do y'all do so much with young people? Why do they get a camp, and you talk about wanting to go on a trip, and they parties, and youth rally. Man, hush that business up. How'd you become a crotchety old person like that? Stop being ugly. Listen, we're trying to teach the kids that the Lord is good. And the world is trying to teach them everything but. And you think you can just swing by for an hour a week and somehow at somebody else's job to raise your... Oh, well, we went to church for an hour a week for 10 years. And somehow the devil won. Yeah, because he had everything but an hour a week. You can't come in and say, hey kids, God's good. And then the world for the rest of the week is mocking God, mocking God, mocking God, putting pressure on them, filling their head with nonsense and think that that's okay. They're not going to turn out all right. You need to have God at home. You need to show up. Listen, get them involved. Yeah, I don't believe they ought to have a youth groups. They didn't have no youth groups in the Bible. No, they didn't have Snapchat and people sending naked pictures to them in the Bible either. They didn't have crack cocaine and street gangs. They didn't have a lot of stuff. Got any other stupid ideas about why we shouldn't pour in? Do you know it's not easy working with youth? It's not easy working with youth. You know why? Because they're jacked up. They have problems just like the rest of us. And they need somebody to talk to. And they need to love, they need somebody to love them, even when all they want to talk about is which superhero is stronger. How, although they have no training, they could defeat the worst of enemies with the karate move they saw on YouTube. We just have different thoughts. We don't think like they do. But we can love them. Most of them don't have any money. They're broke. They can't afford to go where we want to go. So sometimes we ask people to give and help. It's not an investment in bowling. Listen, if we take the youth bowling, it's not because we care about bowling. If we take the kids to the mountains, it's not because we care about Colorado, although I am emotionally attached to Colorado. But, but if, if we take the kids, you know, to go play whirly ball, it's not because we like play Sesta Mints with go-karts or bumper cars. And if we take the six kids to Six Flags, it's not because we care about roller coasters or can even ride them anymore. 
We do all those things not because we care about all those things. We do those things because we care about the young people. And we want to give. Give them time. Give them time together. Give them opportunities. And there is a little bit of torture that goes along. I, we missed it last night, but I understand they had to eat seaweed and raw onions and other things. So although they are all perfectly healthy, they did all almost throw up last night. I think one or two did throw up, but it's okay. They're strong. But you know what? They also had a Bible devotion. They had some fun. They, they laughed. They laughed at each other. They laughed with each other. They, they got some preaching. And they made some memories. That's not so bad. That's not, that's not so bad. You know, it's some people in our church just say, you know what? We could do stuff for us. Those two couples could have been on date night last night and really got some good quality time with their spouses. But instead, they hung out with all of our kids. Why? Because they're givers. That's who they are. Both of those couples are givers. That, that's, that's who they are. And on behalf of the Lord and our church, they got together with the kids and spent the evening with the kids. If that meant giving rides home, providing food, doing gross stuff, and I mean, you know, it's just what you do with teenagers. We put up with them, so we torture them for fun with some of the games. But listen, it's a blessing. When, 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 when children's church workers, Sunday school teachers, youth workers, listen, when they stand before the Lord, I don't think they'll, like, oh, Lord, I'm so sorry that I had some fun with some of the kids as we were learning about you. I mean, really? With all kinds of Kindles and iPads and iPods and wireless speakers and everybody above three years old having a cell phone these days and all the digital stuff that's going on. What are we supposed to do, church? Just run off a couple of 1953 mimeograph, you know, purple ink on it like, you know, and hand them a box of broken crayons and say God is good? You go, well, if they were spiritual, they're kids! So we give. Jesus gave. Paul gave. Look at the verses there. In verse 28, he says, Take heed unto yourselves. Don't worry about what everybody else is doing. You take heed unto yourselves. Verse 29, he says, There are grievous wolves out there. You want to know why we make extra effort to love on people and do so? Why? Because there are grievous wolves! You get to verse 30 and he says, you know what? All the troublemakers ain't on the outside coming in. Some of them are right here among us. There's a fungus among us. And every once in a while, the devil will ride shotgun in with somebody and they'll have a bad attitude and cause a problem when there didn't need to be a problem. Now I thank the Lord we've been 16 and a half years and we ain't never had a church split. But we've shot some wolves. Not literally. Not literally. I shot a cat one time, but he actually needed it. It was, it was a good thing. Never shot a wolf. I'll protect our people. I'll protect our people. I don't appreciate anybody that would hurt anybody in our church. We'll get all up in their business. We'll hurt their feelings. We ain't having no trouble. We ain't having no trouble. Listen, you go, well, that's just because you're a tyrant. No, I, I'm far from it. I know how to do it. I could lock this sucker down. Some of y'all would leave, but there'd be a whole bunch more to replace you. There's a bunch of people that love that stuff. I just ain't having it. This is our final authority. Amen. I'm not the final authority. This is. Amen. If that means you go or that means I go, this is our final authority. Amen. We're just not having problems. 
So we watch for wolves and we watch for trouble on the inside. Why? Because we've made too much of an investment and the Lord has made too much of an investment. People have lived and died so we could have this in English. They've made too much sacrifice. We ain't having no nonsense. Sometimes, Paul says, problems come from within. And then he says, in verse 31, he says, watch like I've been watching. Paul says, I ain't fitting to be here forever. So, you watch just like I've been watching. And that's been handed off through generations after generation after generation all the way to today. And we are still trying to instill it in the next generation. That in 50 years when preachers dead and gone. And these young people have grown up. And they're still serving the Lord. They will be watching. Just like the people before us watched and wouldn't put up with nonsense, and we ain't putting up with no nonsense, we're raising some kids that will be no-nonsense Christians. And they won't put up with any of it. They'll be able to spot a wolf in sheep's clothing. They'll be able to spot false doctrine. By the way, you got to teach doctrine before somebody can spot false doctrine. And you ain't got time to teach about every little false hither and to. When the secret service is getting, and when they're training people on uh, uh, looking for counterfeits, they ain't got time to look at every single counterfeit method out there. You know what they do? They study the real deal. And at a glance, they know it so much. It's so much a part of the fabric of who they are that you find somebody that's in counter, counterfeiting. They can actually counter counterfeiting. Is that just fitting? And whatever, you know what I mean. So they just they can look at a hundred dollar bill or a twenty or a ten, and they can say that is counterfeit. So how do you know? They may not know right away. They'll just say, I don't know exactly, but I know this ain't real because I know real well enough. Listen, that's who we need to be as church people, as God's people. As Baptist, as independent Baptist, as independent fundamental Baptist, independent fundamental King James Baptist, we need to know that we know the Word of God and the doctrines well enough. When somebody comes honky donking around with God's Word, we spot it right away and we flush it out. But it takes effort. Paul says, Watch, just like I've been watching. In verse 32, I love it. He says, Stay close to God and to His Word. Verse 33 and 34, he reminds the people that he's always been a giver and never been a taker. He's always been a giver. He's never been a taker. And then you get to verse 35. Look at it. He says, you know what to do. And here's what it is. I have shown you all things, how that so laboring, you ought to support the weak, and to remember the words of the Lord Jesus, how he said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. You say, what am I supposed to give? In Matthew 25, he said, give food. Give drink. He says, go visit people in prison. Give them clothes if they're naked. And he said, do it for the least of these. You know, the people we pretend like we don't see. The people we pretend we don't smell. The people we pretend we don't dislike. The people we tend to ignore. He says, support the weak. By the way, weak ain't a blessing to be. We live in a backward world where people are pretending to be weak so people can give them stuff. That is ungodly. If you are able, you need to be up, you need to be moving, you need to be working. He said, so labor, labor. We're supposed to be workmen. What he tell Timothy, he says, study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed unto God. Hey friend, we need to be workers. We need to be laborers. So you can, listen, it says right there that he's able to build you up if you so labor. Why? So you can be a giver. 
So you can be a giver. I, I know people that ain't ever given nothing but a hard time in their whole life. I ain't ever given nothing but give people a hard time. You go, well, I love it when I get this, and oh, I cheated a little bit so I could get this and that. Listen, that's why so many young people aren't getting married today, so they can be on the dole. They, they, the father of their children's living right there, baby daddy living right there at the house, and they're like, no, we're not married, I'm single. And I, so why? So they can get free benefits, so everybody can sit at home and watch Maury Povich all day. Is he still on? I don't even know if he's still alive. Is he dead? Yeah. Poor Connie Chun. All right. He's able to build you up, though, so you can be a giver. God's plan for His people is that we would be givers and not takers. Now, and I say it a lot. You get tired of it, I'm sure, but I don't. I love it. Everybody needs a helping hand from time to time. But you'd better remember, honey, that's why God stuck one on the end of each of your arms. Help yourself if you can, and go beyond that and help somebody else. Go, I don't know what to do. Give somebody some love. Love somebody. That may be the only thing Burt Bacharach ever had, but that's what the world needs, some love. People need some help. Sometimes people need protection. Sometimes people need a meal. Sometimes people need money. Now, I'm careful about giving money out. I'm afraid I bought some crack cocaine and some meth. I ain't never had an illegal substance in my body. I've never dealt drugs. But I think I've probably given some money to some people that probably went straight to a drug dealer. So I try to be careful. I try to meet the need. Usually the need ain't money. The need is gasoline, a meal, something like that. And by the way, be easy to help. I don't want to get into another message. I've got that one coming for you. It'll be a, I'm sure that'll be a blessing to you. It's called be easier to help. Some people are just staking inconvenient. They come and are like, I need you to pay my water bill. You're like, water bill, what can that be? 30 bucks? For, oh, $732. <laughs> you about to be dehydrated. Some people just need encouragement. Some people need a ride. Some people may need a place to stay for a minute. Sometimes people just need help. Listen, and we're the givers. We're supposed to be the givers. Figure it out. Figure it out. I like being the guy who figures it out. I like being known as the guy who figures it out. One of the greatest compliments, our daycare director, she said, call preacher, like, what, what's he going to do? He'll figure it out. That's what he does. He solves problems. I'll take that testimony. I'll, hey, I promise there's a lot worse things been said about me that I can solve problems. Probably this morning. Probably during this message. Somebody thought it. Rat dog. But you know, I like solving. We had preachers calling, like, hey, one of our missionaries is having an emergency. They have to come home, and, and we don't have a place for them. Our mission houses are full. We'd have to baby Jesus them because there's no room at our end. So, we're, you know what we did? We were out. It was date night. We were sitting at my wife's first favorite restaurant, my. 13th favorite. <laughs> but she's my first favorite wife, so we, whatever. <laughs> and we interrupted our date night. And I contacted somebody and said, you know, I was just thinking. And somebody contacted one of our church members. They're church members now. They were about to be moving down here. And they already had a house secured. And those missionaries came, and I, you just have to think, I can't always provide, but I can have a brain that can figure it out. I may not have a meal, but I may know where the, 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 you know, the, pantry, the food pantry is. I may not have a ride, but I know somebody's got an extra car. In this case, somebody had an extra house for a minute. And those missionaries came and stayed at that house, 
And what a cool story that that missionary who came home all of a sudden, emergency style, gave birth to their baby daughter in our church member's bathtub. That's a cool story, man. That missionary will never forget that our church family was able to give to them a place for a few weeks. Most of the time with our two mission houses, we usually have a place. A lot of people are so thankful. We had a missionary the other day, and he was so, he's like, oh, that's one of the nicest places I've ever stayed. Can I come back in March? You know, and it's, they just look and that, it's only there because our church family gave. They gave money. They gave time. They gave, you know, just gave. Sometimes you just have to give. We had to have folks. Thankfully, we had a plumber who, in, in the church who could go and set the sink and set the toilet. We had uh, uh, another missionary that was in that we were trying to be a blessing to that he could lay the floor and paint and do all the things that needed to be done. Hallelujah, man. Our people just bought the paint, bought the bought the flooring and bought the stuff and our ladies gave time. Oh, man. We were out one night and we just swung back by. We had left a vehicle here and we were coming back and it was late. It was like 11 o'clock at night. And there were a group of our ladies over in that mission house cleaning. I was like, what in the world are y'all doing? They're like, well, it had to be done. Praise God for people who give of their time and their effort. That's a really long introduction. The message is very short. It's this, three points. Number one, follow good examples. You are now or you soon will be exactly what your friends are. That's not original with me, but I sure like it. Follow good examples. Find somebody who's living the Christian life and just mimic that. You go, well, I don't have good standards. Well, adopt somebody else's until you get your own. Adopt the standards of someone that looks like they know what they're doing. Follow good examples. Secondly, labor. Work and work at it. Like anything else, when you work something, it gets stronger. So labor, labor for the Lord and work at it. Just get stronger and stronger in the Lord. But never quit laboring. And third and lastly, remember the words of the Lord Jesus. What a, hello. Isn't that deep? That's deep theological doctrine. Listen to the Lord. The Apostle Paul, that's, that's all he said. Follow good examples. Labor, just do it. And remember the words of the Lord Jesus and the only words in red on that whole page of mine. As my Bible's open on these pages, on both pages, I have only one sentence in red. And it said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. When we're thinking about whether we want to get something or we want to give something, I'm not talking about at Christmas time. I'm talking about in life. Man, I'm talking about in our lives. Remember the words of the Lord Jesus. He was a giver. He said, I came not to be ministered to, but to minister. Well, if we're going to live a Christ-like life, what in the world are we supposed to be doing? Staying around with our hands out? No. We're supposed to be serving one another. Loving one another. Praying for one another. Obeying Remembering and obeying the words of the Lord Jesus. Let's all stand. Listen to me. I would rather be the one praying over a lengthy prayer list than to be on a bunch of people's prayer list because something's wrong with me. I would rather go to the hospital and visit people who are sick than wonder if anybody's coming to see me in the hospital. I would always rather be the giver. I would rather go and deliver groceries than to have to answer the door because I was unable to provide for my family. Who are you? Are you a giver or are you a taker? Now listen, for all of us to be givers, somebody's going to have to be a taker at some point. 
But in our lives, that ought to be rare. I like what David said. He said, I've never seen the righteous forsaken nor his seed begging bread. If we're begging bread, honey, something ain't right. Something ain't right somewhere. But if we don't have the heart to give, why would we be a hypocrite and try to receive? Give when you can. The Bible says, give and it shall be given. I like all that shake and press down. I like that stuff. That sounds good. But that ain't about to happen. But what we learn to be givers. And you're not going to be a giver if you're lost. Listen, if you're here today and you're not saved, you don't know if, if, if the Taliban's blew us up right now. Where would you be in five seconds? If you're dead, where are you at in five seconds? The Apostle Paul said, I'm confident I say and rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. Where would you be in five seconds after you die? It'll be either be heaven forever or hell forever. If you're not sure, let me help you. You may be the sweetest, nicest person in this building. But if you're not sure about your salvation, I'm convinced that it's because you're not saved. You say, well, I might be. I think I... Just come down let's talk about it. Just come down here and let's talk about it. Some of you know for sure you're on your way to hell. I'm convinced of that. Pride will keep you in your seat. You won't step out. You won't come. You're going to go to hell over our prayers, over our efforts, over the gospel of Jesus Christ who suffered and died for you, who was buried and rose again the third day. For you. And some of you will sit and stay and just go straight to hell from a church seat. I don't understand that. But some will come. Today or eventually, but you're not guaranteed eventually. All we have is today. If you're here and you're not sure, today is the day. That's why you feel inside the way you feel right now. The Holy Spirit's bothering you, letting you know you need to walk that walk. Just, just walk down here. We'll even ask nobody to look around. Just real private. Come down and let one of us show you in the Bible how to be saved. And if you are saved, are you a giver? Like you want to be, like you ought to be? Or are you still tempted to be a taker? God help us. Father, we love you. Lord, if there's one here who's not sure about their salvation, I pray that they'd come. And then, Lord, we all struggle with different things. Sometimes we struggle with greed and pride and other things. And God, we want to be givers. We, we desire to be givers. Help us, Lord, to have our heart right. I believe if we get our heart right, you'd, if you had some willing givers, I just believe you'd take care of the means. Father, would you bless our invitation time, please, in Jesus' name.